We're so grateful you decided to join us today. Can you put your hands together? We're gonna worship Jesus. Come on, he's worthy no matter what we're feeling today. He's worthy of all the praise. Sometimes you've got to dance through the darkness, sing through the fire, praise when it don't make sense. Sometimes you've got to stare down the giant, praise from the lion's den. Sometimes you've got to shout it from the mountain, louder in the valley, trusting that he's going to get you there. Sometimes you've got to welcome the Praise you anywhere, praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest Come on, praise. praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest he is worthy, yes he is worthy of all of the praise. Sometimes you gotta praise in the prison, cry out to him, shout it till the door. Swing wide. Sometimes you gotta stand on your shackles, brave in the battle. Worship with your hands in the air. I'll praise you anywhere. Praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise. Give him praise, give him praise in the highest. He is worthy. Yes, he is Give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise. Give him praise, give him praise in the highest. He is worthy. Yes, he is worthy of all of the praise. Yes, he is. He's worthy of all the praise. Yes, you are Jesus. And faithful all my life. Blessings day and night. Praise you anywhere, every promise, yeah. goodness, every step, each and every breath. I'll praise you anywhere, faithful. I've seen it in my life, that seems day and night. Countless reasons why I'll praise you anywhere, every promise, yeah. goodness, every step, each and every breath. I'll praise you anywhere, faithful. Praise you anywhere, every promise, goodness, every step, each and every breath. I'll praise you anywhere. Praise, give him praise, give him praise. Come on, shout it out to Give him praise, give him praise in the highest, cause he is worthy. Yes, he is worthy of all of the praise. Give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise. Give him praise, give him praise in the highest. He is worthy. Yes, yes, he is worthy of all of the praise. Oh, you're worthy, Jesus. Every day of our lives we say that you're worthy. to praise today because today is Splash Party Sunday. Yes. And we have over 80 people going public in their faith today, and that's something to celebrate. As we continue to worship this morning, you're going to see people coming in and out of these tanks. As they go under the water, it's representation of their old life dying. And as they come back up, it's representation of the new life that they've decided to live in Christ. So come on, church, as we continue to worship today, can we celebrate with full hearts, with hearts of joy today for the miracle that has taken place this morning? Can we do that together? 
Come on, let's go. Come on, we're not done worshiping in this room this morning. Come on, we serve our worthy God. We have a reason to celebrate in the room, amen. Woo! Come on, let's sing this. And there is no shadow that has ever overcome your life. And there is no rival. Come on, church. That could ever stand against your mind. You've always been with us. Every power you've already won. Oh, we've already won. Come on, church, get those hands up. And there is no heaven that has ever left a mark on you. And there is no army with the power to conquer true. You've always been with us. Every battle you've already won. Oh, we've already won. Come on, can we sing it with faith this morning? Here we go. Show me one thing he can do. Show me a mountain he can move. He's the God of the bread. Come on, that's it, church. Show me one thing that's too hard. Show me what he can part. He's the God of the bread. And there is a kingdom, come on, that's advancing at the speed of light. And in his kingdom, come on, every dead thing, every dead thing is bound to rise. I got a redeemer, he is faithful to revive, oh, he will revive. Come on, you are. Show me one thing he can do. Show me a mountain he can move. He's the God of the breakthrough and anything is possible. Show me one thing that's too hard. Show me what else he can do. He's the God of the breakthrough and anything is possible. Now come on church, if you believe that, come on, can we get those hands up this morning? Come on, let's sing this. Now all of my fear will turn into praise. Shake off this fear as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every... Here we go! All of my fear will turn Come on, we have a reason to celebrate this. Oh, victory! Oh, victory! I will dance out I will crush this point and break every chain. All of my fear I will turn into rain and shake off despair. Yeah. 
your name today. God, we lift up that name that is above every name. We thank you for every person who just went public with their faith. And we pray for every person in this room, God, who brought a need with them here today. May their faith be encouraged. May their spirits rise as they're in your presence. God, speak to them. Build them up as we look to you and as we call on the name of of Jesus. We give you all the praise. Come on, let's celebrate the name of Jesus today. Let's lift him up today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, you can be seated. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. Wow, babe, that was incredible. That was awesome. First of two, sir, 85 people signed up to be baptized in water today. (laughs) So amazing. Yeah. We're glad you're here for it. My name is Chris. My wife, Kara, if we haven't met yet, we have the privilege of being the lead pastors here at Oaks Church. We're so glad that you're here today. For those watching online, glad that you guys are with us today as well. If you're new, 
Maybe you came to see a friend or family member get baptized, or maybe you were invited by somebody this week, and this is your very first time at Oaks Church. First of all, we want you to know that we've been preparing for you, yes. uh, praying for you. We're glad that you're here. We want okay. you to feel welcomed home. But we'd love it's to meet you and connect with you, and one of the ways that we can do that is through the Connect card, the orange Connect card. Yep. And if you would, just take a minute, look for it, reach up, grab it, fill it out, let us know that you are here. And you can drop it in the buckets yes. as they go by in just a minute, or you can take it out to the lobby to our Connect Center. Yep. We've got a team of very friendly people that would love to meet you, answer any questions okay. that you have. And uh, we've got a gift for you as well, just for being our guest here today. Yep. And uh, so stop by the Connect Center, pick that up. And maybe you've been coming around for a little bit, and you've now made Oaks Church your home church, but you've not yet gone to Growth Track. That's your next step. Yes. It's uh, how you get connected. Again, you can learn more about the church and join uh, a team, get in a group, yep. uh, find your people, your place, and your purpose. Growth Track happens every first and third Sunday. We've heard so many stories. We have. Of people that have finally jumped yep. into Growth Track and they've gotten connected they and do. they've just seen God do incredible things yes. because of that. So next Sunday, Growth Track is going to be happening during the second service at 10.30. Yep. And you can sign up on the Orange Connect card or you can just show up that day and uh, it'll be a really great time, a great experience. You're going to meet a lot of people and get connected. Yeah. But again, more than anything, I want everybody to feel welcomed home here today. That's right. And another way we would love to connect with you is that we would love to be praying for you. We would love to know what you would like to be prayed about. So if you can grab the blue prayer card in the seat in front of you, you can also just scan the QR code to do it digitally. Let us know if there's any prayer requests you have that you'd like to know this church is praying for you. You can also on that card, let us know how God has answered your prayer prayer because that is so encouraging to us. In fact, we had a card turned in this week. Oh, my card sweat from Splash Party. That's good. You're <laughs> in the Splash good. section. Yes. It? Um, her card said, one morning I woke up with a bump on my neck and I feared that cancer may have returned. But my group prayed for me on Sunday before my appointment and they did more scans and praise God, the bump is gone and the scans are clear. Come on. So we praise rejoice. God for that. In that healing, we believe for your healing. So if you can fill out this card, drop it in the buckets as they're passed in just a moment. We pray over every single card at our prayer meetings that happen on Wednesday night at 7. You don't want to miss the prayer meeting at 7 o'clock on Wednesday night. And I'm super excited about this prayer meeting because we're starting a new series about fighting for your family. Yeah, last week I was just praying about the next few weeks of prayer meeting. God put it on my heart to do this series about family. And listen, we're all a part of a family in some way. We've got a mom, we've got a dad, we've got a son, we've got a daughter. So like whatever family looks like to you, we're gonna be talking about how to fight for our family. We know the enemy is on the attack. He wants to tear apart our families. And I think this is a time to just come into the presence of God, open up his word. And we're gonna learn how to fight for your family, how to fight for your kids, how to fight for your marriage, and how to fight for your home. Yes. Nehemiah chapter four, Nehemiah instructs him, Fight for your family. That's what we're going to do here at Oaks Church on Wednesday nights for the next four weeks. Yes. If you need a breakthrough or you need a miracle in a relationship in your family or in any part of your family, come to the prayer meeting this week. Yes. We're going to talk about it. We're going to pray for it. I believe that God is going to move. I do too. Babe, we got to celebrate what happened here last I night know. as well with yes. Oaks Men Night. Hey. Were there some guys that were here last night? Yes, there were. We had about 400 awesome. guys here worshiping the Lord. We had so much activity, so many fun That's things so fun. going on here. It was a lot of fun last <laughs> night, uh, but the best part was being together in worship. I mean, it's just pretty powerful when 400 guys gather to worship yeah, the great. name of Jesus. Yep. Powerful time at the altar. I just believe God did some I incredible work yes. in, in the lives of some of our men. Yep. And uh, we just want to continue to see Oaks men grow and get stronger. Yes. Um, and another way you can be a part of Oaks Men is this coming Saturday is our next men's breakfast. So at 8.30 a.m., we're going to gather together. We're going to eat some good food. We're going to hang out together. We're going to get in the Word of God. Yep. And uh, 8.30 to 10, make sure, yep. guys, let's keep it going. Make sure you're here this Saturday for men's breakfast yes. and just celebrating all right. that God is doing in Oaks Men and Oaks yes. Women yes. and every part of our church. Well, now we're going to continue worshiping the Lord together. I'm going to ask our auditorium host if they would. Go ahead and make their way down front as we prepare to give our Sunday morning tithes yeah. and offerings. We call that kingdom builders here because as we give, we're building the kingdom of God. 
And before we give today, I just want to give you an update. Yep. You know, it was three weeks ago, we had our miracle offering. And God's given vision to this house yes, about how we can reach more people, make more disciples, and be a bridge to our community, right. things like the park at Oaks Church that we're praying for. And so we had a miracle offering yeah. that was coming off of our Kingdom Builder series. And I want to celebrate with you what God did on that day yes. and let you know kind of where we stand and what we still need in order to, to get the park going. So on Miracle Offering Sunday, yep. $430,000 came awesome. in on that day How great. to move the Thank vision of this Lord. house forward. Yes. And that number represents so many steps of faith. Yes. So much obedience. I just want to say, Oak Church, I'm proud of you. I'm thankful for you for hearing God and yeah. stepping out in faith in that way. So here's where that leaves us now when it comes to the park at Oaks Church, one of those vision projects that we've been praying about and right. believing for. So we now, after Miracle Offering, we now have $800,000 yes. available towards the park. Yep. What we need now is $450,000 to be able to start that project. So we're getting closer. Yes, we we're two thirds of the way there yep. to be able to break ground and start the project. But we're committed to not going in debt on right. this, to right. paying in cash. And so we're gonna be good stewards. We're gonna be wise about it. And we're gonna wait until God provides yes. the resource to be able to get that project started. Yep. And so if God is speaking to any one of your hearts and you want to make a, a gift towards that, maybe above and beyond your regular giving, you can talk to, to me or Kara about that. Yes. Um, you can email us or text us or, or whatever. We'd love to talk to you about that. But we're believing in the weeks and months to come, God is going to provide that next $450,000 that allows us to break ground right. and get that project That's started. Right. And I know God is going to use it to make disciples for the next generation, yes. for our community. Come on, how many believe it'd be a good thing to have pickleball courts yes, and basketball courts yes. and a playground opened up to our community, yep. to all of you and your families? I just know it's gonna be a great thing yes, for is. all the people that are moving into these homes behind us, God's gonna use it. So let's keep praying, let's keep giving, let's stay faithful in what God's called us to do and He will provide, yes. amen? amen? If you're giving today, the ways you can give are on the screen. You can scan that QR code, you can text to give, go to our website and give that way, or you can drop what you came prepared to give in the buckets as they go by, along with those cards. But let's pray now over the offering today and over what God has called us as a church to do together. So Father in heaven, we worship you today, not just in our song, but Lord, with what you've given us, the resources that we have, and so we worship you now in our giving. Lord, thank you for being the one that provides. Thank you for a generous church. Thank you for speaking vision to us and moving us forward and allowing us to build your kingdom alongside of you. So God, I pray now for what's given today. Bless it, multiply it, and use it to reach people and to meet needs. Thank you for what you did on the Miracle Offering Sunday. Thank you for how you've been providing. And God, we know you're gonna see this through to get this across the finish line. So speak to your people, stir our hearts towards generosity, I pray that we finish the park at Oaks Church, that the walls will come down in this auditorium, that we will be able to reach more people than ever before. I pray it in the name of Jesus. We love you and we thank you for it. In your name we pray, amen, amen. Bless you as you give today. You're in for a treat today. Pastor Scott yes. is bringing the word from Exodus yes. chapter five. Well, I love you, Pastor thank Scott. You, love you. But as the buckets go by and before we go to the word today, that's one more time stand and worship the Lord. As we continue to worship today, we're going to sing a new song. And I just want to encourage you as we sing this, that if you're in the room today and you're needing breakthrough or healing, provision, whatever it is, that the Lord has all authority in heaven and on earth to make things change for you in an instant. So my prayer right now is that our faith would be high, that the Lord would come and meet us today. Lord, do what only you can do. We're here for you. Oh, creation knows the voice that's spoken to the void. The breath that brought the dust to 
You know, we gotta, we gotta consider ourselves today. Are we a people who are trying to make something happen for God? Or are we people who understand that we are under the authority of God and we don't do things for him as much as we do things with him, with his power, with his strength, with his anointing. He will cause all things to work together for our good if we love him or call according to his purpose. We have a part in this and that is to seek him to cry out to him, to submit to his word, to live in obedience to him. But when we do that, then we already know it is inevitable. We will win. He will win. Are you with me on that? So the question today is this, who's the king of your life? Who is the Lord of your life? God, I pray today that you would help us to come to a full understanding of that question of what that means for us and how we're living our lives and the fruit of what happens and comes out of our life. And I thank you for the freedom. Strongholds are gonna fall when we get this right. Miracles can happen. Uh, align, uh, alignment with you can bring incredible fruit that will last of righteousness and peace. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. You may be seated. Well, good morning, everybody. Let me ask you something. How you feeling? How you feeling? I hear some woos and I hear some good. Okay. You know, good when, and good is good. I like it when you say good. That's good. But, but the thing about good is it's kind of an auto response. I mean, it's like I could be worn out, stressed out, you know, uh, all messed up inside perhaps, but you're going to ask me how I'm doing. I'm going to go, it's all good. It's all good, right? How many, how many of you find yourself doing that? And really the truth of the matter is half the time I'm good, but I'm really just tired. <laughs> I'm tired, you know, and that's, that's probably not just me. In fact, I'd say that's probably a whole bunch of us in here and it doesn't take the gift of prophecy to figure that out uh, because there are polls out saying that Americans today are working harder than we've ever worked before. In fact, the Gallup poll tells us that um, the average work week has moved from 41 hours a week to 47 hours a week, which eh, I don't know if that's really too bad. Uh, it's just that at the same time, the time we're spending resting is 37% down, set 37% less during that time. And probably the biggest reason is this uh, time saving device, you know, <laughs> labor saving device. It's more of like labor enabling a device, you know kind of gets you at, at home that there's no boundary between work and home or family and, and uh, your job. You know why? Because you, 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 do y'all remember there used to be a time you had to go to work, to an office or to a job site? Now you just reach across the table and say, oh yeah, I need to do something real quick. Just a second, okay, just a second. All right, I'm back. You know, like this. Or after dinner, you turn on Sports Center and you catch up with the scores while you catch up on your email. You're just working all the time. No wonder... Three out of five Americans say they're more tired than they've ever been before in their life. Well, but, you know, there is good news. The good news, at least we're making a whole bunch of money, right? At least we're making money. At least we're getting stuff. We're good at buying stuff. Got a whole bunch of stuff. In fact, did you know that 22% of the world's economy is based off of Americans? That's pretty good when we're only 4% of the population. I mean, we, we buy a whole bunch of stuff. And, and in fact, we buy so much stuff, we have to buy second homes, second houses just to hold all our stuff. And some of y'all going, I ain't got no second house. You got a storage unit? So you got a storage unit, you got a house for your stuff. And I want you to see this stat. This stat from Governing Magazine says $38 billion industry, this storage unit stuff. There are approximately 50,000 facilities like this 2.3 billion square feet of space for our stuff. That's a lot of stuff. Now, why aren't we trying to work so hard and make a whole bunch of money and get so much stuff? It's the American dream. And it's gonna make us happy. I mean, isn't that right? Isn't that the whole aim? Why do you work hard? Why do you get money? Why do you buy stuff? Because you wanna be happy. The problem is, it, it, it ain't making us happy, it's making us sick. $250 billion a year is what we spend as Americans on prescription drugs. $250 billion a year. Nothing wrong with taking drugs if you're needing it, it's just why do we need it so bad? 
Number one is cholesterol medicine. The second biggest is antidepressants. And we have all of this going on. And the, the, here's what's the saddest part about it is the U.S. National Research Council and the Institute of Medicine just says this, watch this. Americans die younger and experience more injury and illness than people of other rich nations, despite spending almost twice as much per person on health care. Now y'all going like, man, I thought there was some good news today. Well, it's coming. But we got to set up an issue here. Let's review. We're working harder than we've ever worked, which means we're more tired than we've ever been. We've got more stuff than we've ever gotten, thinking that's going to make us more happy than ever before, but it's actually making us sicker than we've ever been before. And all of this summed up really sets up really good to get to Exodus chapter 5, because all this sounds a lot like Egypt in the days of Moses. If you haven't been here the last few weeks, let me catch you up. We're doing a week by week study chapter by chapter through the book of Exodus the second book of the Bible I love this Pastor Chris Pastor Kara I love how we value the Word of God go through the Word of God like this it is just amazing and I love you guys so much this is what we've learned Israel the people of God are in bondage in Egypt Pharaoh who's the king has them working forced labor Right? They're slaves. They've been there for 400 years doing this. And, and what are they having to work on? What's he got them working on? That's right. He's got them building storage units. I'm not joking. Exodus 1.11. We learned this the first week. So they put slave masters over them, talking about the Israelites, to oppress them with forced labor. And they built Pithom and Ramses, which are names of uh, uh, pharaohs as store cities for Pharaoh. They had so much stuff, they didn't have storage units, they had stored cities. That's just how much stuff they had. And so the Israelites were slave labor to build these stored cities, and uh, it, it, it was a bad situation. They were uh, in bondage. God saw the issue. The scripture tells us he saw them, he heard their cries. So as Pastor Chris has taken us the last couple of weeks, God showed up at a burning bush, spoke to Moses, said, I'm calling you. He was a reluctant leader, but God told him, I want you to go to Pharaoh, the head of Egypt, and I want you to tell him to let my people go. And uh, I want to deliver my people from this whole Egyptian way of life, this slavery, this uh, just nonstop work and, and, and no rest and no worship of God. No, no, it's just messed up. He says, I want to set them free. So he says, I'm going to send you to do this in like the authority we just sing about. In my authority, I want you to go do this. And then he told Moses, he said, but it's going to be a process, guys. It's not going to happen in a moment. How many of you know, if you've already seen the movie, uh, you know, uh, of Ten Commandments and, and how they got out and all that, if, or if you've read the Bible, then you already know there's a whole bunch of plagues coming and a lot of power of God being demonstrated. How many of you know he could have done that in one day? He could have done that like in a moment and, and they would have gotten out. But, but they didn't do it that way. God says it's going to be a process. It's going to be a process. And the process starts with, don't go tell the Pharaoh, hey, let my people go completely. No, just go tell them. It starts like this. Tell them you want to take a few days off to go out in the desert to worship me. And that I commanded you to do this. So Moses is, I'm going really quick through a lot of stuff we've studied, okay? So Moses heads to Pharaoh when he's on his way. God comes to Pharaoh again, or, or to Moses and says, let me remind you, let me give you another heads up. You're going to go tell him, uh, let, give us a few days off, let's go worship the Lord out in the wilderness. But Pharaoh's going to tell you no. So I just want you to get, get a heads up. You're going to do your best, but it's not going to work right. You know, he's still going to say no. But I know this, so I'm telling you this, so just do it anyway, okay? So that's where we catch up now, and we start in Exodus chapter 5. You ready? Exodus 5, let's go. First one, I'll go over here and read it with you. Ready? Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Let my people go so that they may hold a festival for me in the wilderness. Pharaoh said... <clears throat> who is the Lord that I should obey him and let Israel go? I do not know the Lord and I will not let Israel go. Let's pause for a second before, I mean, <clears throat> that's some bold words uh, saying, uh, who is the Lord that I should have to obey him, do what he says, 
But let's just be honest. The guy, how would he know? There's all kinds of gods of Egypt. He doesn't know the God of the Hebrews. He doesn't know Yahweh. You know who he worships? He worships a God by the name of Ra, that is the God of the sun. In fact, it is thought of in Egypt that Pharaoh is the earthly manifestation of Ra, that he is Ra in the flesh, you know? And so he is like a pseudo God. So it's almost like he's saying, hey, I don't know who this Lord is that you're talking about, that I should obey him. I'm the God here. Okay, I'm the one who's the boss. That's the attitude that Pharaoh has here. I'm not going to listen to him. Okay, Moses is not deterred. He doesn't argue with him. He just asks again. The God of the Hebrews has met with us. Now let us take a three-day journey into the desert to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. But the king of Egypt said, Moses and Aaron, why are you taking the people away from their labor? What is he concerned about? All the work that they're doing. Get back to your work exclamation point get back to work that's what he said so uh moses and aaron they walk out now this went exactly how god told him to go go say this this is what he's gonna say happened just like it but i don't think that moses was expecting what came next check this out that same day pharaoh gave this order to the slave drivers and overseers in charge of the people you are no longer to supply the people straw for making bricks. Let them go and gather their own straw, but require them to make the same number of bricks as before. Don't reduce the quota. So before we go any further, let me just break this down. In order to build storage cities, you had to have bricks. They didn't just go buy bricks somewhere, get bricks delivered, you know, from Bill's First Source or something like this. I mean, you get bricks and, 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 and you have to make them. You get clay, you get chopped up straw, and that's how you make it, and that's how you make the bricks. Here's the problem. If they don't have straw and they got to go look for straw, they ain't going to be able to get the quota done. So it's not one thing. It's one thing to say you're going to have to do more work and go get the straw. I know for us it's like straw. Who cares about straw? Well, it's just like somebody telling you you got to get the same work done, but you got to do twice the work. But get the same results. He knew what he was doing. He knew he wasn't setting them something up that would be hard. He knew he was setting them up for something that would be impossible. Okay, check it out. Next part. They are lazy. What does he think they are? What does he say they are? Lazy. That is why you are crying out, let us go and sacrifice to our God. We need time off to worship the Lord. We need to put God first. This is how he's saying, you're lazy is what you are. Make the work harder for the people. For what reason? Why make it harder? So they keep working. His whole objective, keep them working, keep them working. Then they won't pay attention to the lies. What are the lies he's talking about? God's command. The spirit of Pharaoh says this, who is the Lord that I should obey him? You guys get to work. You're lazy if you think you need time to set aside to worship the Lord. Just work. That's the only value you have is to produce. This is the spirit of Pharaoh. This is that attitude. So, man, it's a tough deal because what happens is they go out, they're trying to get the straw, they're trying to get the work done. They don't get the work done. It doesn't work. So guess what? You go like, well, too bad. No, it's not too bad. When you're a slave, it's real bad because what they did is they went out. The Egyptian slave drivers got whips, they got sticks, and they beat the overseers who are Israelite overseers. So you had Egyptian slave drivers slaves, and then the go-between, the management, were Israelites who had been recruited out of the ranks to become Egyptian management. Get it? And so what happened is they were Israelites who had bought into this system of Pharaoh, and they were management, and they got a little bit better gig in slavery there. To, they were more successful, if you will, to be management. But when they did not hit quota, they were the ones who got beaten up. So when they got beaten, they were upset about it. Look, we're doing our best. And you, you used to provide straw. You don't provide straw. Now it's our fault. It's our fault. So then what do they do? Check it out. Next verse, verse 15. Then the Israelite overseers went and appealed to Pharaoh. What did they do? They say it out loud. What did they do? They appealed to who? Pause. 
People of God, let me ask you a question. When you feel like life is unfair, when you feel like your boss is treating you wrongly, and when you feel like things have not gone the way they should, when you feel like you are tired and upset and, and things are not the way, who do you appeal to first? Because who you appeal to first will reveal to you who is the king. We, why have you treated your servants? They called him their Lord. We're your servants to the Pharaoh. These are Israelites. They appeal to Pharaoh. Why have you treated your servants this way? Your servants are given no straw, yet we're told, make bricks. Your servants are being beaten, but the fault is your own people. Notice how they kept saying, your servants, your servants, your servants. They're appealing to Pharaoh as their king. They've bought into the system of this world, while at the same time, they're still saying Yahweh's their Lord. This is, this is the thing that is a, is a big deal for us to look at today. Uh, let me just ask you, how many of you could feel frustrated? I mean, like when I'm reading this passage, I've read it over and over and over and prep for this. I get so upset at this point where those guys, it's not our fault. We didn't do anything. You know, how many of you can feel their frustration and how frustrating that would be? Yeah. You know why we can feel it and relate to it? Because we live in a type of Egypt ourselves. I'm not saying that we are beholden to a, a, a king and a palace and we're slaves in that way? No, but would you consider that perhaps uh, we still have something going on in our head? A, a, a little Pharaoh shouting out us, sh shouting at us in our head. Some of y'all think what I'm saying, oh, we live in Egypt. Yeah, I got a bad boss. He's like Pharaoh. I ain't talking about your boss at work. I'm talking about the voice in your head. I'm talking about how you talk to yourself and saying, hey, man, I feel so guilty when I'm not working. I got to work. Even on my day off, I got to work because that's who I am. And I work hard. I'm a hard worker. Work harder. Work faster. Work longer. Produce. 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 That's my value. That's who I am. I am. That's my identity. I'm a hard worker. I get things done. Make more bricks. That stuff in your head is the little pharaoh that is in there that is part of the culture of America, culture of this world. And, and if you're not careful, you can even be there saying, you know, he's Lord, uh, but you're really acting in a way that he's not. You're, you're singing a song. If the Lord comes through, it's his authority, it's his word. But uh, then you walk out, you live in a way, if you're not careful, that it says, man, I don't know if I can depend on God. I better make this happen. So I feel like today the Lord gave me an assignment to come almost like Moses, not like I think I'm Moses, but I'm saying in that way. Moses going to Pharaoh to confront him, let my people go. I feel as though the Lord put on my heart to come and confront the Pharaoh in your mind, the Pharaoh in your heart, that Pharaoh attitude that says, I don't know the Lord, and who is he that I should obey him? I want to confront that by, by just saying this. I feel like the Lord is saying this to you. Everybody listen? Because I wrote it down because I felt like this is what the Lord wanted me to say. Uh, I want you to work six days. And on the six days, work with all your heart into me. But on the seventh day, I want you to rest. I want you to separate yourself from the system of this world. Quit striving to climb the ladder of success as if you think it's up to you. Trust in me. Make the Sabbath day holy unto me. And if you do this, I will set you free from the abusive taskmaster in your head. And I will bring you into a rest that I have prepared for you. A life of peace, confidence, and closeness to me. This is the abundant life I'm calling you to. And so the question this morning is, how are you going to respond to that word? Are you going to say, like Exodus 5, 2, like uh, Pharaoh, who's the Lord that I should obey him? Now, I know nobody in here is on a church on a Sunday is probably going to say, who's the Lord? You're going to say, I know he's the Lord, but I'm not sure I can obey him in this one. Do you see that it's almost the same thing, though? 
Because Lord means master. Lord means boss. Lord means the one I follow to become like. Lordship means he's the one I take my cues. He tells me what to do. I do it. I want to be like him. I want to act like him. I want to live like him. And if he's Lord, then you do what he says. But just consider, even in this executive, executive Exodus 5 passage, we have two groups of Israelites functioning in a different way. They're both saying he is Lord, but they're acting in a different way. Moses and Aaron, on assignment from the Lord, go risk their lives to confront the most powerful man in the world and tell him to let all his slaves go. That's putting their life on the line. They're coming in under the authority of God, trusting that God's going to protect them and help them. You with me? That's lordship. While we have another group of Israelites, the Israelite overseers or foremen, those who are in management over the slave, and they're getting beat. They come in and they appeal to him and say, You're, uh, we're your servants, we're your servants. So they are saying they believe in Yahweh as their God, but they're treating Pharaoh as his, their king. They're acting in a way that is different. How, how are we doing on this? When we refuse to take a day of rest each week, and I'm not talking about a day off, like you work and then you have a day off, day off is honey-do list, go, go run errands, go get, you got to get your cleaning, you got to get, you know, get your hair done, you got all that. I mean, that's a day off. That's not Sabbath. Sabbath is a day that's holy unto God to rest and to be with him. And when you refuse to do that, whether you're meaning to say it or not, with your actions, you're saying, I know better. My way's better. My way's more productive than the way you have it set up, God. I'd like to just point out something here that's pretty interesting. Like we said earlier, God could have let the Israelites be free in one day, in one moment, with one command. He could have set them free, and they were out. He had the power to do that. But he said it was going to be a process. And that process, he said, uh, would, would start in a, in, with this command of, of let them go out and worship. Why did he say it would be a process and not a day? Because I believe it wasn't just God's objective to get Israel out of Egypt. But his primary objective was to get Egypt out of them. It's the same with us. I think God, when we get saved, we say a prayer, God, I give my life to you. But what we really mean is, can you forgive me so I can go to heaven? And that's not totally your fault. Sometimes that's been how, it's just been how our philosophy is because you're saved by grace, totally true. You're saved by what he did on the cross, totally true. But you're saved to become an apprentice of Jesus, to follow him, to become like him, to be like him. It's not about just saying a prayer and going to heaven and go out and live the same old life and then you're disenfranchised like, well, that didn't make any difference. It does make a difference when you stop just calling him Lord and you start functioning in obedience to him as truly being Lord. So in the same way that he wanted Israel out of Egypt and Egypt out of Israel, in the same way he doesn't just want to get us saved so we can go to heaven. He wants to get heaven into us. He wants to be able, his kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven, in us as it is in heaven. This is his desire. And in the same way Moses said, hey, it's going to start off in this process by us taking some time off and going out and worshiping God, which is a type of Sabbath here is what he's saying. In the same way, it starts with us taking a Sabbath, giving God the first of our time. And some of you are like, man, I, I don't even know what you're talking about on this. Because most of us probably define the way I did growing up my whole life just because I guess it was either taught this way or modeled this way or just this how I thought. Sabbath just means we're going to church Sunday. Not a bad thing to do. So glad you're here. I think there is incredible benefit and that is definitely a part of putting God first in your life. Recognizing not that you have to be in a certain place or a certain building, but that you do need to be together with other brothers and sisters, that God's way of you being built is in a family. 
and it's in this spiritual family, and it's with even hearing a message like I'm speaking to you today in love, but breaking down what I sense God's saying to you, how are you gonna get this unless you come together with the family of God to submit yourself to the word of God and to the, to the speaking of God's word into your life? This is big, but Sabbath doesn't just mean go put in an hour, hour and a half at church and then go, go back and catch up on your email or do some work or maybe even, you know, go do all kinds of stuff uh, that are your hobbies. Could mean that. But what, what does it mean to Sabbath? I really had not never seen it. It's only been in recent months and years that I've even kind of thought I, I'm starting to understand what it means to Sabbath from what it means. Now, Sundays are not much of a Sabbath for me. I've been in a pastor's kid's <coughs> home, a pastor's home my whole life, and not just my mom and dad, but in my own home as a pastor being here for 35 years in ministry. So Sunday's a work day. So for me, Sunday, even though I'm at church, I'm working. So I take Saturday as a Sabbath. Saturday starts for me on a Friday night. So I'm just gonna, the reason why I'm doing this right now is because I could say this all day long, but if you don't even know what a Sabbath looks like, you don't even know what it means when we say rest. A lot of us know what it means to work. We don't know what it means to rest. We think rest is the absence of work. It isn't. There's more to rest than that. There's intentionality to it. There's preparation to it. There might even be scheduling to it. So on Friday night, I take my phone and turn it off and I put it in a drawer and I don't pull it out in most cases. until Saturday night after dinner. And that's my 24 hour time. I'm practicing not just saying yes to God, but saying no to Pharaoh in my head. Not saying this is Pharaoh, I'm saying in this practice, part of it is saying yes to God, I wanna be like you, but it's also saying no, I'm not gonna be so wrapped up in the system of this world that I gotta produce to be valuable and to be important and to have value. Part of the practice of Sabbath is to be with the Lord. So in being with him, I realize again, my value is in him and who he says I am and in my relationship with him. And that even when I work, I work my, I work hard. I mean, don't take this as, oh, this is one of those churches, a bunch of sissies, they don't work hard, they don't do it. Man, you, anybody work around me? We work hard. We've had many staff members come here and say, I never worked this hard. Yeah, but that doesn't mean we don't Sabbath. You work and then you Sabbath. And on Sabbath is part of saying, I can't do what God's called me to do just with my work alone. I have to be with him. Do you know what I know? Okay, but listen, listen, lean in on this one on this, in your spirit. Some of you so desperately right now with all your heart want to walk with Jesus. You want to be like Jesus. You want to live holy and righteous. You want to have a better marriage. You want to have better relationship with your kids. You want to have a better thought life. You want to live holy. You want to be more patient. You want to be more kind. Listen, you're not going to be able to do those things in your own work ethic and discipline. You've got to be with him to become like him and to do what he does. And so Sabbath is a way to say, I'm going to set apart time. So to me, here's what a Sabbath looks. I wake up when I wake up. And I get up and read the word, eat breakfast, have coffee, read the Bible, pray a little bit, might go in, sit with Jenny and talk with her, might take a nap a little later, might have the grandkids come over, we might get in the hot tub, uh, maybe we'll, I'll read a book, but it'll be a book that's inspiring me spiritually to lift me up. I'm not going to go work on a message. I'm not going to go work on let me get ahead of my schedule for next week because I'm trusting that the Lord is going to help those days go better when I put him first and I'm trusting him with them. When I rest in him, I'm trusting you. And I rest. I try, now here's, here's the one I'm wrestling with the most. I try to eliminate all screen time. But sometimes when the Masters is on, you might want to watch a little bit of that. But do you understand what I'm saying? What you start thinking on Sabbath is not just about your screen time, but what's on the screen in that time. 
Am I watching things that are making me want to hurry, hurry, hurry? Am I watching things that are feeding into the lust of my heart or my eyes or my flesh? Or am I watching and listening to things that are building me up more like Christ? This is Sabbath. It's not easy for me. Half the time I'm on Sabbath, there's a voice in the back of my head that said, you're lazy. I can hear Pharaoh. You're lazy. That's why you're doing this, because you're lazy. Get to work. Be productive. Work harder. More bricks. And I have to settle that down and say, no, I will trust in the Lord. I'm not going to live Pharaoh's way. I'm going to live Yahweh's. God's way. And since I've been doing that, let me tell you something. There is such a greater peace in my life, such a greater rest, such a greater confidence. I am, things that I struggled with are not as much a struggle. It's like I've got the peace of God in this deal. The energy, the fuel to live this out. My relationships are better. I'm, I'm able to be more patient, more kind. And, and so I'm just telling you, some of you, you want to do what God's called you. You want you, you, what you want. You want to be free from the bondage of sin, which is exactly what we're reading about in Exodus. The picture of that is that the bondage to sin is paralleled in the New Testament to the bondage and slavery in Egypt and how God wants to save you and deliver you from that. That deliverance starts with Sabbath. It's big. All right. Let me just finish it this way, guys, the same way that Jesus did on the Sermon on the Mount. If you've read the Sermon on the Mount, it's the most important message Jesus ever shared. It was his longest message, his big message. It was basically, let me tell you what I've come. The kingdom of God is near. It's at hand. Here's what it's all about. You've heard the world say, do it this way. I'm telling you my kingdom is this way. My kingdom is this. You're going to be blessed. And you got the Beatitudes in there that are all be backwards, backwards. <laughs> you know, I was trying to be funny there with like Beatitudes to be backwards, but it didn't work. But they're like backwards truths to the way the thinking of this world. So his whole deal is to preach a whole message on, basically on this Sabbath principle would be like, I know all of you have heard it said, work, 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 and don't ever Sabbath and don't trust me, but do it on your own. I tell you, those who Sabbath and put me first with your time, you will be blessed and you will have the abundant life I want you to have. I didn't come to just save you from hell. I came to save you from the system of this world that's got you in bondage. Now, he, he ended that whole talk. I'll end it the same way. Check this out. You ready? Check it out. Here it is. So why do you keep calling me Lord, Lord, when you don't do what I say? I'll show you what it's like when someone comes to me, listens to my teaching, and then follows it, does it. It's like a person who keeps building a house, who digs deep and lays the foundation on solid rock. When the floodwaters rise and break against that house, it stands firm because it is well built. It doesn't say if, it says when the storms come. Storms, if you haven't been in them, if you're not in them, they're coming. And when they come, it's going to beat against your house. And if you've built it on living, not just listening to the word, but doing it, it's going to stay well built. It's, well, it's going to stand. But anyone who hears and doesn't obey is like a person who builds a house right on the ground without a foundation. By the way, before the storm comes, guess what? The first house and the second house both look the same. In fact, you might even have a, a house over here, not with a big, big foundation, a great foundation, but it even may be fancy. It may be a palace. It may be amazing. It may be, look at what they got. Look how they're living. But when the floods sweep down against that house, it will collapse into a heap of ruins. What's so sad and so disenfranchising to people who are part of a church is when they listen to God's word one time a month, but they are not apprentices of Christ, so they are not putting it into action. And then when the storms of life come and their world falls apart, they say, this Christian thing doesn't work. No, it's that you didn't do 
the work. You built your house thinking, I'll listen, but I'll build it how I want. And that's the result. Guys, he's inviting us more than just to eternal life. He's inviting us to abundant life. But it all hinges on, are you going to say, who's the Lord that I should obey him? Or he's my Lord. What else can I do? He has the words of life. Amen? Okay, so here's a great book. Some of y'all are still going, well, you kind of gave me some ideas. You just said take a nap and stuff. I don't get it. So here's a great book. If you want to get this book, it's called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. If you'd like to order it, we've got it on the QR codes on your seat backs there that if you click on there, you can go straight up to order it today. Get it on, uh, listen to it if you want. You can, Guys, I know a lot of y'all, I ain't reading no book, but I, I kind of want to do this stuff. That's all right. Get it on uh, audio book and listen to it. Put it on 1.7 speed if you need to. It'll it, still be slow enough for you to get it. How many of you today, do you feel like this may be something the Lord is speaking to you? Okay. If that's you, take that hand you raised. Now put it on your heart. And we're just going to ask the Lord to help us. God, I'm praying right now that you help us to repent, not just in our thinking, but in our actions. That we would trust you with our lives and with our time, with all that we do. We put you first by making the Sabbath day holy by being in your house to worship, being with your people to worship, but also to rest, to put the phone away, to put work away, to be with our family, to worship, to pray, to be replenished, to learn how to truly rest in you. You have prepared a promised land, a place of rest for us. Help us not to miss it because we're disobedient. with your head bowed, eye closed. Let me just ask you, is anybody in here say, Pastor Scott, I, I don't know Jesus. I've not given my life to Jesus. Even the stuff you're talking about today, this is news to me. And I wanna, I wanna follow Jesus. I wanna go his way. My way ain't working. The Bible says that all of us have sinned and fallen short of what it takes to come to God on our own. We can't, we, we, we need to work for sure, but we can't not earn salvation. There's a work to it, but not an earning to it. It's a grace gift. It's just us coming to you, Jesus, and asking you to forgive us, but also saying, I want to be your apprentice. I want to follow you. Teach me your ways. If you're here today and you say, I want that. I want to not only know Jesus and have eternal life. I want to have abundant life. I want to live his way. If that's you, I want to ask you just, we'll count to three. If that's you, just raise up your hand. If there's anybody in here, we'll pray with you. Not that's okay if that you just raise your hand. One, two, three. Just raise up your hand where you're at. Hi. And when I see it, you can lower it. I see it, buddy. I see it right here. I see it right here. Yeah. Okay. See it. See it. See it. Amen. There's quite a few people. Stand to your feet if you would. Those of you who raised your hand, Pastor Chris is going to come up and tell you next steps. Because everybody look at me. If we didn't learn anything today, we need to have at least learned one thing, and that is this. Don't call him Lord and then not do what he says. We learn that. Who's our king? We say Jesus. We live Jesus. And so today, Pastor Chris is coming up, and he's going to tell you about what we have on the side here in these deals. Don't just raise your hand and say yes. Follow through. And what does it look like to learn how to grow and to live in God? If you're here today and you don't know how to do all that, man, get in. Get in. Ask somebody. Say, hey, man, what... How do you get into this? Get the book, and we're going to help you. We love you so much, okay? Let me just pray for you and Pastor Chris. Those of you who raise your hand, pray this prayer with me. Dear God, forgive me of all my sins. Take it all away. I don't want to live for myself anymore. I want to live for you, and I want to live my life the way you've called me to live. Give me the grace and the strength to do it. In Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. I want to encourage you to heed that warning and take that encouragement to heart. There's a better way to live, and Pastor Scott just shared with us a way to live rested and peaceful. 
A rested church is a powerful church. A rested family is a powerful family. A rested marriage is a strong marriage. If you raised your hand to pray that prayer that Pastor Scott just led us in to give your life to Jesus, first of all, congratulations on making the most important decision that you'll ever make in your whole life. But we wanna walk out that decision with you and help you to know how to live this life now. And so your next step simply is to go to one of the areas around the auditorium that says, I said yes. There's two in the back, two in the far corners, two up front to my left and to my right. And there's a team there that just wants to talk to you about now kind of what to do next. And we have a, a gift that we wanna give you, a Bible, to help you begin to live this life out. By the way, if you gave your life to Jesus just now, your next step is water baptism, which by the way, you don't have to wait to get baptized in water. You can get baptized in our next service. If you're in this room right now and you've never been baptized in water, but you want to be, or you just raised your hand for salvation and you don't want to wait, you want to get baptized in water, talk to one of our team. We'll get you connected. You can get baptized in this next service. How many think that'd be pretty cool if we just didn't wait even one hour? But we just obeyed what the Bible says and we get baptized in water. But I want you to walk to one of those areas if you raise your hand. If you're near somebody that you saw them raise their hand, would you just let them know, hey, I'd love to walk with you to one of these spots, because at Oaks Church, no one want to walk this journey out with you. And I want to thank you for being at church today, for celebrating all the new life here today, for going on this journey through God's Word. You made a good decision to come to church, and we're better when you're here. And now as you go, I want to pray the blessing of the Lord over you and your family from Numbers chapter 6, the priestly blessing. So Oaks Church, may the Lord bless you and keep you this week. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face towards you and give you his peace. To the glory of God and the blessing of his people. I love you so much, Oaks Church. I hope to see you this Wednesday night for our new series. God bless you guys, see you soon. Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining Oaks Church on our YouTube channel. Our prayer is that you were encouraged and your faith was strengthened today. Yes, and we would love to connect you with our online family and our OC online Facebook group. To do that, you can like our Oaks Church page and click join group. And make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and press the bell for notifications. You'll have access to life-giving sermons and worship that will be a blessing to you and your family. Yeah, we'd love to have you join us live for our Sunday services and Wednesday prayer meetings. We hope you have a great day today. Thank you for watching and God bless.